Hey everyone, this is Blackstone Fortress solo playthrough. This is part one. Of course, I started the game in the previous video, so check that out if you haven't seen it yet. That's the setup and the actual beginning of the game. Right now, I am in combat mode, so I have the board set up. I've done the initiative deck. I've done all of the activation die rolls. All that's left to do is to actually start the combat. That starts with the initiative deck, but... I think there's a special ability from a spaceship for initiative. Amelin Shadow Guides special ability. Once per expedition, an explorer can take the crystal scanning matrix action during the activation. If the action is taken, pick a hostile group that has not been activated this turn, well that's all of them, and swap their initiative card with the card at the end of the combat track. That's okay. But I don't think I want to use that yet. I think Janus Drake also has a... Uh, he's got the strategist skill. In the first turn of combat, Janus Drake can perform a gambit without an activation dice being rolled. That means that Janus can attempt to steal initiative f from an earlier card. Personally, I like not having initial initiative because then they have to come to us rather than us going up to them. But then again, under these circumstances, I think it might be better to go to them. But then you're wasting like two moves to get to them, and that just feels silly to me. It feels like it would be better... Where Where is Janus? Let's find out. So one, two, Amelin, so that could be good. And then Taddeus, oh wow. Oh, Janus is at the very end. So he could send someone to the very end of the initiative if he does a gambit correctly. A gambit is an agility roll. His agility is a d8. So I could roll here and see if he gets a success. He does not. He gets a, a blank. He gets an empty roll. So that didn't work. Now he could try, He I could use one of his activation die to attempt a gambit to really, really get him to the front but i i don't i don't think it's worth it i could be wrong i could be wrong because these guys are fierce but i don't know what else to do i mean really i'm gonna let them come to us take my chances okay so one group that's the one oh these are the this is the one group okay well whatever i mean they're right after them so uh, either way we're gonna make the bad guys take the first move which sometimes i actually prefer to determine the bad guy, the hostile movement, I roll a d20. This is the Blackstone die. And I rolled a 16. That's usually not great for me. No line of sight. Do they have line of sight? Yeah, yeah, they have line of sight of these explorers. Are they engaged? No. Are they in cover? In cover from visible. Yes, they are in cover. They do an onslaught action. What is an onslaught action? There's a nice handy little cheat sheet here for the actions, and it looks like onslaught is attack the closest explorer in range and visible, then attack the closest explorer that is in range and visible. Spindle drones are a little bit unique because their attack depends on the threat level, and the threat level starts at zero. So I will place a zero there, I guess. And that may increment uh, depending on events later on. But right now they're at threat level zero, which means that they... Uh, we'll be using a square dice because they are one, two, three, four, five. So they're more than four uh, hexes away. They're going to be attacking, I guess, Janus because that's who they're within line of sight. Although I guess they could attack. No, I think I think Janus. There's a measuring utensil over there that I could use, but um, yeah. So we'll just take two attacks. And that's two misses, because D6s only have one success and one critical success. Very rare for that to happen. And we've already used that up on the previous challenge. So, not really not really a problem. That, that happened. 
and nothing really happened. Okay, next one in initiative order is two. These guys are mean. They have three attacks each. They literally attack three times per attack. If anyone was needed to go later in initiative, it's them. But remember, their action is determined by a die roll. So we could get lucky, possibly. Uh, let's see. So they are in cover and visible. So I'm going to roll the black stone die which is eight. That's lower is usually better for me. So eight while they're in cover. Oh, that's not an option here. Okay. So what are they? Are they two or three hexes away? No. Are they engaged? No. Are they hidden? No, they can see Janus. So they are, wow, this is the best possible thing that could happen. They are they classify for the other category, and on a roll of an 8, they fall back. Once again, all of the actions are on the back of the rulebook. Fall back is double this hostile's move value when they take this action. If this hostile can make a move that ends in a hex that is not visible to any explorers, they do so. If they cannot, they attack the closest explorer that is in range and visible to this hostile. Their movement speed is a 3, but because they're falling back, that's doubled. So they're going to be moving 6 hexes away from our from our explorers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm assuming planning an ambush, because now they're out of sight of our explorers. Our explorers cannot see them through walls, so they're they're as far out of sight as possible. Uh, that's a great result. I mean, both of those were great results. Fail, fail, fall back, fall back. Really, really lucky. Okay, Amelin's Shadow Guide is up. So she's got a 2, 2, 2, and a 4 available. Probably going to spend one of these die. I just put that aside because that's just I'm just this this is currency now and the the value of the pips on the die is what they're good for anything one and up is good for a move her move speed is three which again I've actually just noticed I've been playing her I think as a move speed of two so that's interesting that I've been doing that wrong for ages now um, so we'll do one two three into view of at least these spindle drones. I kind of think that she could probably take those spindle drones out. She's really good at ranged attacks. I mean, that's 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 what she does. They have wo two wounds each. I think she can do this. So uh, she's got three dice, which I believe can afford her three attacks. She'll be able to do two attacks with her long rifle, and then one of those she'll be able to do with a four four or greater activation die, which gives her the opportunity to re-roll a failed attack and to ignore cover, because she is shooting through cover right now. So for two of these, she will be shooting through cover, which means that she's going to need a critical success to hit. I mean, I could spend one of these to get her to move, one, two, three, but then her range she's closer range and so her attack is less effective in that sense so i think and i could be making a miscalculation here but i, I just think it's better to roll her d12 trying to get through cover best as she can be, best she can let's see what happens so we're going to spend one two die on her first attack and she gets a success which is not useful wait a minute I just realized I can spend an activation die for her to aim and then and then ignore cover. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So we'll say that I've spent an activation die and I ignored cover. So one of those has one wound. And now she's going to spend her four on her full attack, her her great big attack. 
which says that she can re-roll a f she can ignore cover and she can re-roll a failed roll. Okay, that's a fail, so she can re-roll that. It would be really great if she could get a critical. And before I do this, I really do need to call. I need to. I need to say which one she's aiming for. So I could gamble and say that she's aiming for this guy with no wounds and hope that she gets a critical. Or I could say she's aiming for this guy with a wound and hope that she just hits. I think I'm going to just go for this guy with a wound and just hope that she hits at all. Ah, she got a critical. <laughs> I should have just... Oh, it's so frustrating. All right, so he's dead. So, she just knocked out one spindle drone, which is w w worth two wounds. So she's going to roll a black stone die, and if she gets a one or a two, she gets an inspiration token. She rolled a 14, so she is not inspired by her kill. Which frankly is fair. That was, for her, that was kind of underwhelming. But you know what? She got rid of a spindle drone. That can't be a bad thing. You know, I mean, she could, she could use one of these die, these destiny die, to take another shot. But I don't think that would be very useful because they're not. It's not a six or above, so she'd be shooting through cover. I don't think it's worth it. So I think I'm just going to say that her turn is over. All right. Next is Taddeus the Purifier. Taddeus is not. He's not exactly the the most fearsome of heroes. Um, my favorite feature of him is his healing, and um, and he doesn't have any sixes on his activation die, so he has no healing this round. Um, he's just got two, three, five, five, so he can attack, but he's really better at melee attacks because he's got this big power maul that he carries around. So that that's his D twelve attack right there. He does have this little side gun with a servo skull um, that helps him out. But that's two D8s at, at relative, at, within two or three hexes. Um, at four plus, it's just really his, his best attempt is um, this, this gun, uh, the servo uh, stubber, and that's only a D8. I mean, I guess he can take a shot. <laughs> through cover. So anyway, he, he his movement speed is only two. So I guess I will spend one one activation die on getting him out of the maglev chamber. One, two. Okay, he's out of the maglev chamber. Um, what's he going to do now? I guess spend another activation die to keep moving. So he'll move over Amelin. And now he's still he he can see them. His little servo skull could could take a shot through cover with a D8. So I guess that's what I'm gonna do. I don't feel great about this. He fails. I have half a mind to just keep him going towards the exit, but there be ghouls, and he I, I don't feel like I really necessarily want him to have to face ghouls. I think I'm just going to spend another attack, I think. I, I don't know if that's the right choice, to be honest, but uh, that's what I'm going to do. And he fails again. Yeah, that's kind of what I felt was going to happen. Okay, so Taddeus has used up his turn. There are still these two Destiny die. He hasn't done great. Could he fail? Could he possibly fail again? That just doesn't seem likely. Probability seems like like it would have to succeed eventually. Oh wait, so his servo skull, when you spend a dice of five, can do sustained fire. So those last two attacks that I spent two fives on, he gets to actually t attack twice. So I'll roll two more dice for him. I'm really glad I noticed that. So that's a critical and a hit. So he has just killed one of the drones. Wow, that's huge. Um, 
Now that means, of course, he's he's killed a thing worth two wounds. So if he rolls a one or a two on the Blackstone die, he gets inspiration. And he rolled a four, so almost, but not quite. Okay, cool. Wow, good job, Tadius. Proud of you now. Um, okay, that's his turn. And then we've got, what do we got? Pious. Okay, so Pious is really, really strong with her flamer at close range. She is, or at, at vaguely close range. And she didn't roll too terribly for her activation die either, to be honest. Uh, she's got a 2, 4, 4, and a 6, which uh, that 6 is going to come in handy because that's her purifying, her, her cleansing flames. And to get her over to the ghouls, and, and that's an area effect too, as you would as you would expect. It's a flame th thrower, so she can attack a group of ghouls all at once. She's amazing. She's just both in the book and in the game. She's amazing. So anyway, um, I'll spend a two for her movement. I think she has a movement of two. If I'm not, oh, she has a movement of three. Wow, okay. I think I've been playing her wrong as well. One, two, uh, three. She can land in the same space as a friend, uh, as, as a, a hero, because she's got, she's a medium size. That They're both medium. Okay, so wait, what was that? One, two, three. Yeah, okay. So then I'm going to spend a four to get her, f no, you know what? This is crazy. I'm going to spend this uh, little one destiny die to get her to move more. Uh, one, two, three. And then I'm just trying to make sure that I don't use her good... Yeah, I'm going to use this stupid destiny die again. It's just a three. One, two, three. Okay. So I feel like she might be within visual range, but I'm not 100% sure. So I'm going to actually take out the line of sight measuring stick here and see whether she can get from, from her hex to their hex without going through a wall. And she really, she really can't. Oh, that's so frustrating. That's just so frustrating. Now I see why they fell back. They're trying to lure her in. I mean, she's got to take this attack. Or she doesn't have to take this attack. She's got three dice. She has a special, really interesting ability called Inferno. And that costs a four or greater. And she has two, four, four, two, two dice on four. So this action can be taken once per activation phase. Place an Inferno marker in up to two empty spaces that are visible to her and adjacent to each other. When an explorer or hostile enters a hex with an inferno, make a d8 attack roll against it that ignores cover. Remove the inferno uh, markers the next time Pius Vorn is activated or if she is taken out of action. So, I think I'm going to have her lay a trap. I think that's the smart thing to do. So these are the activation dice, or not uh, not activation dice, Inferno tokens. And so I'm going to just place one there and one here. And now if the ghouls come back towards her, which they're going to, um, almost certainly. Oh, so I spent a four on that. But she's still got a four and a six left. I think what I'm going to do is put her into overwatch mode. So I'm going to spend an activation dice and knock her down to a five. And she's now in overwatch. So I'll put that next to her so that we know that she's in overwatch. And when she sees an enemy coming towards her, she is going to make whatever attack is uh, logical for her to be able to make with that activation dice. That's how overwatch works. Okay. So that's her turn. A kind of a weird turn for her, but 
um, nobody's taken damage on my side yet, and I count that as a, a major win, especially against the Urghuls, because they are the worst. And it is now Janus Drake's turn. He's got a 1, 3, 5, 4, 6. Not a whole lot he's going to be able to do with that, to be really honest. He's really kind of more of a melee uh, attacker in the book. He is a duelist, so he's really, really skilled with his sword. That's kind of a specialty in the game. It's re it, that's reflected as well. So, okay, that's fine. We'll spend his measly little one to go his movement speed, which is probably a two. Yes, okay. So one, two, he can land in her square. Spend his three to go one, two, one, two. Spend his four to go two, one, two. Um, and then he's got the six, which just seems crazy to use a six for something not very exciting, but that's what he's going to do. He's going to go two spaces, one, two. So he's just going to hang out with Pius Vorn. Um, and just, just, that's his turn. He's moved a lot. So I think we'll end it there. Um, we're in a good position right now, in theory. We've got a trap laid for the Urghuls. They're gonna come back, uh, circle back around. I'm sure of it. The, the tricky thing is going to be, uh, on the next combat round, when I redo initiative, are they going to come late enough in initiative that the trap will spring without just kind of delaying everyone else. So I have created a bottleneck, a potential problem. We'll see what happens next time.